cool. you know how I'm going to start this video? Uh, <laughs> the MCAT is hard and the MCAT is important. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going to record that intro and put it at the beginning of this. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> All right, buddy. So I have with me Raj from NCAT Bros, and we are going to go through a quick schedule making using my past MCAT scores. I'm going to share them so you guys are going to see them. He's going to see them. And we're just going to do a quick rundown of how to do a quick schedule because he's just trying to get information out free because there's so much demand and he just can't keep up. So we're gonna build a schedule for Aaron. Um, so, all right, let's pretend Aaron's like a student, right? And he has these scores. He's coming to me, he's like, oh shoot, I'm not, I'm not thrilled with my scores at all. Um, I have a, Is this the there we go. All okay, right, so cool. he has a 499, 125 chem fizz. So that stayed the same, um, 123 cars. Honestly, guys, cars is one of the hardest things to improve, all right? Even our students, they have the hardest time improving it. And it's really about consistent practice. Uh, so we just had one student who went from like a 123 to a 129 on practice, hasn't taken the real test yet from Puerto Rico, and English is her second language. So what she says is literally just, you told me to do three, two to three cars passages a day, and that's it. So every single schedule that you have, minimum two cars passages a day. And try to do those in the morning, all right? So that that's just like automatic. And if you really want to like, you know, push harder, you could do five five a day, right? Um, but you want to make sure you plan your schedule to be something that's doable and feasible. So, you know, two a day is solid, okay? Um, and if you're feeling more motivated, you can add more. Don't plan for more. You don't want to fall behind. That's like a bad mental state. So Aaron's going to be doing two to three cars faster the day, just like everybody else. Um, and then he has a 125, 123, 125? Yeah, 125 in his bio, which, you know, went up a point. Yeah. He has a 126 in his psych soch, which went up two points. So, you know, he's pretty, honestly, pretty average across the board. So that's <laughs> actually like, you know, it's okay. Um, so if you were like weaker in one area, there's two, two thoughts. Uh, one, some people like to say, Focus on your strengths first so you get motivated to keep going, right? And the same thing, and the other people, other people like to say, focus on your weaknesses first so you can sort of reinforce those over time. And other people say, um, just do everything all the time, right? Just switch subjects here and there. That's what I was doing when I was <laughs> studying. I was like, I'm just going to study everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, everything works, you know? Um, so... You know, with Aaron, everything's pretty consistent. So uh, we gotta we gotta say, all right, Aaron, uh, what were your grades and under? Like, where do you feel weak? Where do you feel weak, Aaron? I, I feel my biggest weakness was definitely cars and chemistry. The chemistry uh -huh. physics section definitely felt the most difficult to me whenever I was studying for the MCAT and then when I was taking it as well. Yeah. So. The, the thing with chem fizz is it's the most material, right? So it takes the longest to get through and it's just one section because there's yeah. two classes of chemistry, two of physics, two of ochem, and they put in some biochem in there too. So that's a lot of credits. That's like four times, it's like 27 credits are being tested in one section. So it's the most credits from undergrad being tested at once. But what's nice is it's sort of more fundamental and more basic and less problem solving as your classes. And I think a lot of students, they struggle with cars and they struggle with chem fits. Mm -hmm. um, and as a, as a subject, I'm not, and sometimes what happens is bio majors, they actually end up getting a lower bio score than they expected. But like, you know, they said, <laughs> oh, I did, I, I'm great at bio. I'm great at psych social. I'm like, you know, it's really easy, but they end up with low scores. But as a subject overall, they don't struggle with it. They struggle with becoming a master at it, but they don't like struggle with the topic areas because they're comfortable. And you might be different, and that's okay. So what I think is easy, the, the easiest student to work with is someone who's weak in uh, psych -soch. That's like the easiest points to improve. And the uh, hardest yeah. points to improve are cars, for <laughs> sure. And that's across the board. And then after that, both chem, phys, and bio is straight up about how much time you put. There's no secret strategy. There's no, like, you know, you have to understand the test. You do have to understand the test. But there's, it's just about knowing the material. Dang and it, Raj, no secrets. No secrets, yeah. It's actually, <laughs> I, was reading, I was reading, actually, you guys, like the AMC, um, out, the, the AMC booklet, the mm -hmm. AMC official guide, 
they actually like sell it for like 20 bucks right and no one buys this thing it's crazy like 20 bucks for your mcat and they're mm-hmm. like they'll spend two grand or, five <laughs> grand or ten grand but they won't spend 20 dollars from the official makers to start their test and literally the first line is there's no secrets on the mcat everyone's going to tell you there is there's some secret strategy there's some secret method there's nothing like that it's about learning the material so Aaron's scores are pretty good. Like, obviously, that's, he studied for those, so I would hope so. And he's in medical school. So, you know, um, <laughs> you know um, he definitely got a little lucky, but, you know, like, a 500 can, you know, place you, especially as uh, underrepresented in medicine, into medical school. So, uh, but, like, let's say your scores were lower, like a 120. That's, like, all right. Like, I'm, I'm just going to assume, like, you might think that you know the material, right? And you might, you know, I'm not. But like, to me, you don't, right? You can't prove it to Mm -hmm. me. So I'm going to pretend like you know nothing. And that's how you got to, you got to also understand that. So when you're below like 122, 118 to 122 in any section, just pretend like you know nothing. Like you're just like learning from scratch. And that is honestly a big saver. If you let your cognition sort of say, oh, I know this, I know this. That's a problem. Like, you know, like. There's something (laughs) called, there's like a psych term for that. Yeah, like, <laughs> just pretend, just be humble and pretend like you don't know anything. Just start from scratch and don't skip anything. Uh-huh. Um, and then if you're like 125, like Aaron is, like, you know, you can start focusing more on questions. Like, you know, like he just needs to fine tune, learn from questions, fill in the gaps, you know, um, and he'll be good. So it's not necessary. He needs to do all the content review out of 125. It's not absolutely necessary. When you're at 122, I know a lot of students, they go to forums, Student Doctor Network, Reddit, whatever, um, and they, and they, or their friend, and they say, questions, questions, questions. And I think it, even Aaron says, questions are so important. They are. I love yeah. questions now. They're amazing. But like, <laughs> if you have a 118 and you try yeah. to do a question, it's, it's just not enough, you know? And um, so that's why it's really important to do content and questions, okay? Like, do both content and questions. And there's two ways to do that. You could do content, and then you could find questions that correlate to that content for that day. So you do it side by side. And that way you would hope you get a good percentage correct on those questions because you just learned the material. Or you could do the content review first and then do the questions later. Or you could do a subject first, then do the questions, then do another subject, then do questions. So those are like the, like the, the ways to make a schedule. So that's kind of all encompassing. Um, yeah, that's pretty much like the ways that we sort of use um, to make a schedule. Those are like the big ideas. So you got to figure out what works best for you. Um, what I find is it's really hard to find questions that are exactly associated with each chapter, right? Of like, mm-hmm. let's say you do a Kaplan chapter. It's hard to find a bunch of questions, right? So sometimes it's better to just do the content as best as possible and then we'll start doing questions. So, you know, and that's sort of what we do for a lot of our weaker students. And if you... If you see like subscriptions like UWorld or QBank or AMC materials, they all have a subscription length, right? They all have like three months or six months or 12 months or 15 months for AMC. And I'm not saying you're gonna spend 15 months, but you might spend three mo- more than three months studying. So that's why I recommend make a schedule and try to minimize the time that you buy these subscriptions for. Get the minimum length uh, so you save money. Um, and the way you do that is make sure that you know, you put it into your schedule where it's feasible, it's doable, and you're getting through it in the time that you have. I know a lot of students, they buy something and they don't use it for two months and their, their timer's just running, you know? <laughs> or, you know they're <laughs> not ready. For it. And, yeah, and I know people who buy like a bunch of different things and they don't have time to do all of it. So That's how I feel right now in med school. I feel like I have too many stuff, too many things and I'm not going through them all, but uh-huh. I, I just can't let go. Yeah, because you hear it's good. You hear it's amazing yeah. and you got to buy it, right? Yeah. Your future's too important and you have all this loan money. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> so, exactly. And, you know, that's the thing what I like to do is I like to say, you know, like I, I know one student who bought every single book, every single book, and he literally spent $1,000 on MCAT books. And honestly, that's not too bad compared to a course. And he ended up reselling them for like 700 So he only lost 300 bucks in that process. That's not bad then. Yeah, it actually wasn't too bad, you know, because, um, but he didn't, you know, he didn't use it. It just wasted, like, we wasted shipping money. He wasted his time. <laughs> he had to, like, flip through books. So maybe he didn't waste a lot of his money, but he wasted his time. So yeah. you got to really just trust the resource that you buy. And, like, let's say you heard it's, something is way better. If one thing is helping you, just stick with it, you know, just stick mm-hmm. with it. 
And I think determining the resources is a big challenge. That's another thing we do here. Um, so I actually have all the books and we'll show you my, all my books. We have, literally, we have every single book. Like we have like, every single book here. Yeah, you know, and we, we review them all and everything. And, you know, if the student's concerned about like, hey, which one's better for me? We say, hey, here's a picture of one. Here's a picture <laughs> of another. See what you like to read. Uh, what you could do is sort of go to a library. Um, people don't know this. Literally every book exists at the library. Every single book. Like go to uh, Barnes and Nobles. Or Barnes and Nobles. Yeah, <laughs> they actually exist at the library. You know that you can actually. I didn't know them. that actually. I never went to the library to look for one. Yeah, no one looks. Yeah, it's crazy. Most libraries actually have them. Uh, oh. So uh, especially Kaplan and Princeton, which are mm -hmm. the two most popular, they have them. Um, and then besides that, you could probably get like a lot of used books for fifty to a hundred bucks pretty yeah. easily. Um, so, but I think figuring out the resource that's best for you is really important. Like I, I personally use Kaplan and Exam Crackers because um, I heard those are the best. I don't know. I just heard. I didn't know. Right? It was just like something I heard. Like yeah, I I yeah. used Kaplan the first year, and then yeah. Princeton Review the second year. And I say Princeton is better just because they got a better score. But honestly, they're pretty much the same. Like yeah. afterwards, they're pretty much the same thing. Yeah, yeah, they're the same. Exactly. <laughs> so they literally they all cover the same thing in yeah. different level, in different ways, and in different depth. And so what I think is like Kaplan is great if you don't like to read. Like Princeton is so much reading and you like the colors and you like, you know, it's simple and mm -hmm. organized. You like mnemonics. It works great. Princeton's better if you like, you're, you're, you're a reader. Like you like, you don't mind reading through pages. You want a little bit more in depth, you know, and you want to, you know, a little bit more Princeton likes to, they, they go through the different question types at the start of the, of the chapter. They have a passage in there. Kaplan I think I was probably just salty from not getting good scores in Kaplan. Because <laughs> <laughs> I hate reading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Princeton, you know, they're more thorough, right? But because it's more thorough doesn't mean it's better for you. Let's yeah, say you are yeah. trying to study for in two months. Are you going to be able to get through those giant Princeton books, right? They're, they're much bigger, especially mm -hmm. the... The biology one is much bigger. Yeah, it was huge. It was like three times as big as probably the smallest one in there. Yeah, and the physics one is also three times as big. Mm -hmm. as the, so can you really get through those, right? And do you want to get through those? And if you can, you will know more, right? Princeton <laughs> covers more. Yeah. Uh, so that's something to consider. But like, just because it's more, and like, let's say you don't even get through it all, or you know everything 30%, it's not going to help you. So if you can figure out one resource that you know fully, really well, that's much better than half-assing a really comprehensive resource. Yeah, definitely. I, so yeah, I actually bought exam crackers, Kaplan, and then I used Khan Academy. And I read Kaplan all the way through, and then I used Khan Academy. And I, I honestly felt like Khan Academy was better for my learning style, mm -hmm. where I like to watch videos. I like someone to explain it to me. Um, it's a little Same. bit passive and it takes, it, it takes a lot of patience to get through them all. Um, it's 150 hours. Yeah. Su surprisingly enough though, if I never did the Kaplan books, I would have probably gotten through the content faster with Khan Academy because I'm such a slow reader. Oh, uh, so Kaplan's books have uh, like 72 chapters and that's pretty common across like all companies, like 60 to 70 chapters. Okay. If, if each one's taking you four to five hours, are so you actually going to get through the Khan Academy stuff faster? Yeah. That's what so if you're a slow reader, really definitely consider Khan Academy. If you're a really weak student and you don't, or, or you don't like reading or you're bad at comprehension, you got to learn it for cars, but it doesn't mean you got to like struggle through reading all of this stuff for the rest of the subjects. You Have somebody else read it for you. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, literally just use Khan Academy. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's a little bit unorganized and this and that, but like overall it's pretty good. And if, if something, you know, you could just like brush, once you know it from Khan Academy, you could just go through your books one more time. And just quickly flip through it and learn anything different. So actually probably 50% of our students use Khan Academy for content review. Yeah, I don't so... think there's one med student in my class that I've spoken to that did not use Khan Academy for the MCAT studying. Yeah. Talk, I, everybody that I've talked to has used it. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely, it's just so underrated. And <laughs> for some students, um, we just uh, featured a girl. She went from 500 on her first take to a 517 on her second take. And our Jeez. second take, she did not use any books. No books. She just used Khan Academy. That's All crazy. The so 
And so she did have the foundation from the books, but she could have just used Kyle Chadwin, you know, for her content. So um, definitely consider it. And don't let the marketing of the companies make you feel like, oh, this is it. Like, this is my way to get a good yeah. score. <laughs> Figure out the way that's effective for you. Figure out the way where you're learning, where you're getting through daily goals, and it's, it's working for you. My name is Raj. Um, I started at MCAT Bros as a second year med student. Um, and I just felt that there's a lot of advice out there and it just wasn't targeted to every type of student. Um, it just felt like it was targeted to people who started at 500 and those are the people talking and how to get a 515. But I found a lot of students are struggling to break 490, 480, 470. You know, they're starting at 470. Um, who have taken the test like four or five times and you know, they're looking for solutions. And I just felt like, you know, they'll go to a course, people would come to me, like, I went to a course, I got the score. I went to this tutor and I got the score. And I was like wondering why, you know, why? And, and I, I just figured like, was it them or was it the course? What was it? I was just trying to figure out what was it? And I just realized the biggest thing people were lacking at the lower score ranges was discipline and keeping themselves accountable. And so I sort of made something uh, that allows people to keep them as accountable as I can make them uh, for themselves. And what I realized is the people who hold themselves accountable, they almost always break 500, 505, 507. And you know, it literally is all about accountability and studying hard. And you, you, maybe you won't break a 520 doing that. You gotta really get the strategy down and everything but you will definitely get into med school, a DO school or an MD school, and anyone can do it. Literally anybody is starting at any range. And I just wanted to give some like optimism, some different techniques, and actually just reduce people's cost. And that's what we're sort of about, and build a community. So you're not as alone studying.